All right, guys. So we got this uh, 2010, 11 something year uh, Chevrolet Express van. This is a plumbing truck, I believe, or an air conditioning truck. It's full of equipment in the back. So the customer's concern is that uh, erratically the ABS and traction control lights come on the dash. Uh, he said it usually comes on when he's turning. Um, so there is nothing on the dash now, uh, but I'm gonna give you guys a new tour of uh, Launch's new Diag Gun 4. Um, it's a smaller version. Yeah, launch, uh, I, Diag Gun 4. I don't know if you guys can see that there under the strap. It's got a nice, fairly rigid hand strap on the back. It's a camera. Um, the dongle is stored on the top here. Um, so we're gonna boot it up real quick. Um, it is, of course, an Android product. Let's see how long it takes to boot up here. So we're gonna test drive this thing and see how I like this launch. I have um, other X431 products. This is an X431 product. Uh, so it should have the same uh, software as like the Matco Maximus 2.0 and the other larger, like the Launchpad 2, should have all that same software in it. Uh, screen auto dims here as it's booting on. It's actually rather lightweight too. Uh, it's probably about the same weight, even with the dongle on it, as my S7 Edge Samsung. So it's pretty lightweight, which is good. So it boots up to an Android screen. It's got a browser, it does function. Uh, so we'll kick that on. We'll kick on the software real quick and see. See it loads up, comes automatically to the screen. I had to do some setup, set up my account and stuff. Um, it's pretty easy because I already had a launch account, so I just had to add this device. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Diagnose. Uh, we're gonna click Chevrolet. It's in my common list because I've connected a lot of Chevys and BMWs and Minis. I do a lot of BMW Mini, and some uh, European stuff. So I've been using this kind of on and off just to see what kind of functions it's got. Been very impressed so far. Oh, it's trying to connect to the dongle. So we'll take the dongle out of the top. It does not charge the top, it's just a retainer. Let me get this hooked up here. got audible beep when it plugs in. All right, so now it says. Trying to keep the glare off the screen, guys. Sorry, we're out here in the field. I'm literally in a parking lot. I went and test drove this thing and got it to replicate the condition. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just use this thing just like this. All right, so it's reading data. I'm gonna go automatically search. That is the correct VIN, I believe. Uh, I don't think it's an access. It's 2011, brings us up. See, it blows to the screens pretty quick. We'll go health report. Uh, system scan just does a module check, tell you what's what. I did check, because I was checking on Chevy's. This does have the JL4. Oh, it's already scanning. All right, so we're gonna let it scan. Uh, looks like there's an engine code. It's talked to the TCM and the VCM. Digital radio receiver, the IPC. Everything I've uh, hooked this up to so far has grabbed the, from what I can tell, the majority of every module that all the other scan tools I use. Uh, so I'm I'm fairly impressed so far with what uh, what this thing has done. Rollover sensor, supplemental restraint, remote control door lock receiver. I hope it talks to the EB. Oh, okay, good. Talks to EBCM. I mean, the obvious situation here is that most likely we've got like a wheel speed sensor going out because it's a, you know, a General Motors product. Sorry, I'm trying to find a spot where there's no glare. There we go. Oh, it's done, it's been done. <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, let me actually go back and we'll just go to fault report. And it'll make a report for us. So we can expand each of these and we can see we've got a brake switch circuit high voltage. That's, uh, well, it's a Chevy, so that's pretty common. Uh, and then, yep, right rear wheel speed sensor circuit opener shorted to battery, right rear wheel speed sensor circuit erratic. All right, so we've got C0050 with a 05 and a 0F qualifier. So let's go into the EBCM. We're gonna read the data stream. Actually, 
let's take a look because you can see we can read the codes from here we'll see how quickly it'll just talk to the module to read pretty quick gives our information not run failed and passed history well it's erratic so we're going to see all kinds of stuff um, actuation test what do we got abs motor automated bleed solenoid test yaw rate sensor recalibration so it's got all the relearns you would need from what I can tell, this has the full X431 software. So this is gonna be a full function scan tool. Um, and this thing, I only paid 550 bucks for this on Amazon. So this is a fantastic, oh, module information. Let's see what we got. Uh, calibration number, software part number, sweet. All right, so from the report, we can click fault report, go back to that like we had it up, and then we can, um, we can create a report, put in ve uh, vehicle customer information, and it creates a, a test report to print off, kind of like uh, doing a pre-scan, post-scan stuff for insurance companies. So that's helpful. Um, I'm gonna try to get in real quick. Oh, crap, uh, system select. Didn't mean to back all the way out. We'll just go straight back into the control module for the BBCM. Go back into there, we'll go to our data list. So what you can do is you scroll through the data list and select what you wanna see. So we're going to look at left front wheel speed, left rear wheel speed, right front, right rear wheel speed. So I'm going to look at all the wheel speed. Sorry, I keep checking to make sure you guys aren't looking at some crazy glare. So when you bring them up, it brings all of them up and gives you the values. Now we can go graphical. And we can see all of them now with a smaller platform like this it doesn't auto rotate because the software is designed just for vertical look and then you're only going to see two at a time left front and left uh, left front and left rear so let's change what we're looking at and let's go ahead and go back to data list oh, i guess it didn't have to go all the way back out and let's just oh it saved my settings for me that's nice let's just go left rear and right rear. So we'll see the two rear wheel speed sensors at the same time. Um, I did not verify that tire size is the same, but I'm assuming because this is a work van. Um, so it really, because it really could be either way. So you see, we've got a green line down here. It's starting to read live and red line starting to re read live. If you click it, it brings it up. The, uh, whichever one you click on, it goes full screen. So let's go drive around. I'm gonna try to be as safe as possible with holding this where you guys can see and driving. So we're in a parking lot here. Let's see if I can get it to replicate the issue. All right, so the issue happened. You guys can probably hear it dinging. Let me pull back around, and just get where I can, where I'm in a safe position. All right, we'll stop and take a look here. All right, so if you can see, I don't see a pause button. So it's reading live. So we'll see, there's the left rear. You can see that, and then I'll bring up the right rear. And you see we had a speed drop out. We returned the corner and it just dropped out. So this red graph, graph live data for us, we can change our min max if we wanted to, if we only wanted to go up to 10 miles an hour, if we planned on staying in the parking lot, but you can see we have an obvious dropout of speed in the right rear. So our work here is done on the scan tool. Let's get back to the shop, pull the wheels off, inspect these wheel speed sensors, and we'll uh, do a component level test, uh, hook up the scope or see what's going on. Maybe we'll use another tool.